morning, this is Chris Scott with the Caddis Fly Shop in Eugene, Oregon. Today we're going to show you how to tie a searching mayfly nymph pattern. This is the body quill mayfly using some new materials from Airline. 12 hook and a, tungst, a gold tungsten bead. This is a 1 8 of an inch size. Um, we're using a Vivas body quill material for the abdomen of the fly. So I'm going to start the fly with it. Starting right behind the bead wrapping back. I'll clip off the tag. I'm going to wrap this back right about to where I want the tail to come off the shank which is right at the beginning of the bend. For the tail we're using some brown uh, hen back. I'm going to strip off about as many pieces of this as I can get between two fingers. Is this a thread or a body material? This is a body material. Um, it's got some flash in it. This is like a kind of wine color. I ran this uh, this hen back across my lip to moisten it. It's going to help keep those pieces together so I can manage them. I'm going to tie them in. You doing okay, sir? I want that tail a little bit shorter, so I'm going to grab it by the ends here and just pull it forward until I got it about the length I like, right about there. Now I'll come forward with this quill, this body quill material. I'm going to use the rest of that feather to kind of build some body under there and then I can clip off the excess. Now I'm going to come back and forth across the shank with this material until I've built up the body to a, a width that I like. We can keep this fairly thin for this fly though. Right about there, that looks like a good width. Now I'll come back to the front behind the bead Grab my whip finisher tool and whip finish that off the fly and now we're done with that part. Now I'm going to come back to the to the hook with this Vivas uh, gel spun thread. This is just a regular white. This is a great thread for getting in tight places. Uh, it's super strong. You can use it for uh, tying a lot of materials to the hook without building much body with the thread itself. It's very thin. Really strong. We use it for our saltwater flies as well. So now that I've got that on there, I'm going to grab about a half a dozen strands of pheasant tail. And this will be for our wing case right here. So just natural pheasant tail. About half a dozen pieces. I'm going to square off the end. Okay, and then tie it in right there. This will be the wing case for our thorax. Just like so. And then for the thorax, we're using a UV ice dub. This is tan. So I'm going to pull out a nice little bit of that. If I keep this sparse in my fingertips, I can spin it right onto the thread without having to build the dubbing loop. Also, this will keep that dub pretty tight. I don't want it really fluffy. I'm going to wrap that in there. Up to, up to the front and then I'll come back and try and keep this nice and fluffy. I'm going to add a little bit more. I'd like this to be about the same size as the bead, maybe a little bit bigger. I'll add a little more. There we go. Now I'll pull the wing case forward and tie it off right behind the bead like so. I'm going to leave these wraps a little bit loose because we're going to add some legs to this. So before I tighten that down, I'm going to come back and grab a few more strands of uh, pheasant tail for our legs. We're going to do about four or five pieces. Get them wet again so I can manage them. I'm going to tie them in on each side facing backwards. So I'll just grab it by the tips, set it in on top, make a single wrap just to hold it in place. Then I can pull this forward until I got the legs about the length that I like, right about there. Right about there, and then I'll trim off the excess. And we'll do the same on the other side. Again, just like three or four of them. Moisten them so they stay together. And then tie them in on the other side now with a single wrap. Move it around until I got it where I want it and pull them a little bit shorter, about like so. Trim off the excess. Now I can finish this by pulling a little harder, which will 
pull the material down behind the bead. If you watch closely, you'll see it start to pull back in there. There it goes. So I'll finish up looking nice and clean. I'll make a few more wraps. Now you can see why this GSB is so useful. It's pulling down nice and tight behind the bead. Now we're at a point now where I can finish this thing. So I'll grab my whip finisher, make a few wraps right behind the bead. Draw it tight, clip off that tag, that excess, and I can move those back. There we go. There's a finished product. There's your body cool mayfly.